Pressure canning is the technique you use to can all low acid foods, which includes vegetables, meats, poultry, fish. So um, pressure canning is a lot bigger, um, both monetary investment usually, and a time investment. Um, the reason that um, these types of food need to be processed in a pressure canner is that through pressure, the temperature actually rises above the temperature of boiling water to about 240 degrees, which is what is needed to kill botulism. And um, in a regular water bath canner, we cannot get that temperature up high enough to kill botulism. So botulism is a foodborne um, bacteria that is found in the soil. So all of our vegetables have the potential of botulism, plus um, our other products could contain botulism. So this is a much more intense pro process than water bath canning. And again, one that you have to follow directions exactly and ingredients exactly. So um, I have two water bath canners here. And um, this one is a really, really old one that we have here at our office. And it still works. And many of you may run across these as you go to a garage sale or a, an estate sale or the second hand store. And they're okay to buy and use, but you first need to visually inspect them. If they have been bent or damaged or warped or the lid is, won't go on good, um, please do not buy them. Also, um, you need to check and make sure they have their parts. We can always get new gauges, and we're going to talk about checking gauges. But um, like the jiggler part, you need to make sure it has it. Don't buy one if it doesn't have its handles. You need all the parts and pieces. Water or pressure canners also need to have a rack in them. So again, your jars cannot touch the bottom of that rack. These are really heavy, and you get several jars of food in there, it's like hard to even lift it up. So you may want to not purchase a used one, but uh, a newer model one. This one is probably about two years old. It has a different kind of rack in it than this one. Anything to keep it up off the bottom. It's very light stainless steel, and um, again, the lid goes on, and, and the lids on these go on and lock, where the lids on the water bath canners do not. The, the advantage to a newer canner is a lot of people are scared to death of a pressure canner that it's going to blow up. They've heard horror stories over the years of how pressure canners blow up and and they can that's why you need to be very careful the newer ones are less very less likely to do that because they have um, a pressure escape plug so if the pressure does go up too high the plug will blow and and it will depressurize so if you have any fear at all you may want to go <clears throat> with a newer model. The old ones do have pressure gauges, but they don't, or pressure release plugs. But again, make sure the one you would purchase has that. The other thing you need to check on your pressure cooker or pressure canner, whether it's new or old, is its gasket. They all have a gasket that seals this lid to the canner. Um, we can purchase new gaskets, but this one is terribly dried out. It would no longer seal properly. 
So you need to check your gasket every year. If you do have a pressure canner, you need to store them in a cool, dark, dry place, like with their lid maybe upside down. You don't want it anywhere where it could fall off the shelf because a fall will damage it to a point of you can't use it anymore. Um, you don't want to store it with the lid sealed on because if there's any moisture in there, it could seal and um, you won't get your lid back off. So um, you can stuff them with some little newspaper if you want to keep the moisture away. Um, these um, a pressure canner like this probably costs about $100. Kind of the newest thing on the market in pressure canners is an all-American pressure canner, which um, has both a weighted gauge and a dial gauge, has no gasket, it seals metal on metal, and it has screws that you tighten completely around it. They are a lot bigger, you can do a lot more um, quantity in your canner, but they're running between $260 and $280. So you have to really want to do a lot of pressure canning um, to warrant that kind of cost. They, they are excellent canners, but again, that's pretty pricey. <coughs> Excuse me. Can they use their Instapot or electric pressure canner? No. Those are... You pretty much heard the question. Oh, Erin just asked if you can use the Instapot or a pressure cooker to canning. And no, the answer is no. Um, they are not designed for canning. They're designed for cooking. So the other thing you need to consider is pressure canners come either... Both of these are a dial gauge. And these need to be tested annually to test for their accuracy. And that's what this little piece of equipment is. We, every extension office in Wyoming has a pressure gauge tester. And you can take your um, lid with your gauge attached into the extension office and they can test for accuracy. The test is free and takes less than five minutes. So if it is accurate, we fill out a little form that we give you, whether it's accurate, it's too low, it's too high, and any gauge that registers over two pounds high or two pounds low needs to be replaced. Um, each extension office also has um, order forms um, from Presto that you can replace every part on your pressure canner. You just need to know the model. And like on this one, the model is listed right here on the top. On this one, it is on, and this one I always have to look. They will be either on the side or the bottom. This one is on the bottom. And you can, um, either send the order form in, you can call Presto, you can go on their website and give them the make and model of your uh, canner. And it doesn't have to be a Presto canner. Um, this one is a magic seal from Montgomery Ward, so you know how old it is. And they can um, send you the proper parts. I have to have this master gauge and every extension office has their master gauge checked annually to make sure our testing unit is accurate before we test your gauge. So please, if you buy one used or you buy a brand new one, we have had brand new gauges that do not test accurately. So please have your gauges t checked um, every year. On, um, I'm going to turn the camera just a little. I'm going to show you another piece of equipment we have here. Let me make sure you can see it. Um, what it is, is a food mill. And um, 
This is a really slick piece of equipment. Again, it's not all that costly. Um, it would be great for um, your tomatoes, like tomato juice, tomato sauce that you're going to can. Again, if you're canning tomatoes, whether it's in a pressure canner or a water bath canner, you need to add that lemon juice um, to get the acidity up to the right level. We have used this to um, do tomatoes and um, for um, salsa and apples for applesauce, but you could use it for spaghetti sauce, um, tomato sauce that you would um, then do in a pressure canner. So you would fill your basket full of whatever produce. You have a plunger and you just turn the crank and it starts cranking and the food goes down and out this hole over here comes all of the peels, the seeds, whatever. And out of this hole, this little chute, um, comes your tomato sauce. And it doesn't really um, hook very good to our table because our table is pretty wobbly. But it has different sieves for what you're going to make. We have the salsa one in now, but there's one for um, berries. There's one for other tomato products. So this is kind of a little versatile, fun thing to do. We did salsa with our 4-H kids, and they loved running this little machine. So it was fun. If you're doing salsa, we can do that in the water bath canner. Other tomato products in your um, pressure canner. So I know over the past few sessions, we've covered lots and lots of information. This is just to give you a taste of food preservation. And we hope we maybe piqued your interest a little and you would like to try some. What we have found is try to follow the 4-H model. The best way to do this is to learn by doing. So, <coughs> excuse me. So, if you have questions, you would like any of the information, um, just give me a call and, or Facebook us or send us an email and we will do our best to help you. So give them the phone number and your email address. Our phone number is 307-334-3534. My email address is smith at uwyo.edu. So, and as the summer goes along, we will be doing more in-depth um, food preservation videos. So. We will be putting that advertisement out as those um, classes draw near. So The best place to follow us is Facebook.com, um, University of Wyoming Food and Nutrition. Um, so if you have any problems finding that, again, just shoot us an email and we'll gladly um, get you onto that page. So with that, happy preserving. Just remember to... Um, Follow all the recipes and rules and be safe.